Good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, O oh, holy God, that you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in this morning. There is a word from the Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, we bless your name in this place this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, Rachel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Come on in the room, y'all. Let's get into our word this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. All you need is a touch. Woo. Many times we can search for everything, and the things we're searching for, they can't even save us. They can't even deliver us. They can't even heal us. They're only a temporary fix, my God. Woo, Jesus. But if you get a touch from the master, my God. Hallelujah. If you get a touch from the master, my Lord. Good morning, Stephanie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord, thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, Jesus. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, God. He's amazing. He's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. He's all-knowing. He is all-seeing. Good morning, Kevin. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Ooh, I don't know what it is that you need from the Lord. I don't know what it is that you need from God. Hallelujah. But I just know that he's still doing. He's still touching the earth. He's still allowing heaven to touch the earth. God, I bless your name. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still saving, my God. He's still keeping. He's still restoring. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Yee, glory. I don't know what you need from the Lord, my God, but I know he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above more than you can think, ask, or imagine. My God, when I tell you, when he touches you, you might ask for one thing, but he know how to go in the inner parts of you. My God, he know how to really work with you, deal with you. My God, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus, glory. Thank you, Lord. When I was paralyzed on my left side and waist down, off and on for those three years, I also lost my entire memory, my God. And I remember the day that I got healed in my body. But you know what? I didn't even ask him to restore my memory. And one day I just woke up and I could remember. I mean, it was so bad I couldn't even remember my last name. God, I bless your name. Woo, my God. I'm trying to tell you about a holy God. Woo, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Ooh, my God. My God. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to wake up in the morning and start your day off with worship. Start your day off with praise. My God, it's better than folders in your cup. I'm trying to tell you. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is so amazing, y'all. Ooh, I just thank him for waking me up yet another day. 
Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word on today, God. We thank you for life and breath and strength in our body. Lord, we thank you for those things that we have begun to count as common. We, we just count that we're going to wake up. We count that we're going to hear the alarm clock. We count as common that, because it's just, it comes so natural. My God, it comes so natural that we forget that you have the one that allows us to breathe in and to breathe out and to open our eyes to have activity of our limbs. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for health and strength. And we thank you, Lord, that our heart is still beating. We thank you to be clothed in our right mind. It's a blessing to be in our right mind, God. We thank you, Lord. May we not complain about those things and the problems that are going on in our life, but may we learn how to focus our thoughts. Somebody's arguing and fussing about their child not getting in the alignment of the Lord. Lord, when somebody else is sitting over their child's gravesite. So let's just stay focused and keep our minds fixed, my God, in fashion towards the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We ask that you give us, speak to us today, your children. We're listening for a word of instruction. We're listening for a word of deliverance. We're listening for a word of confirmation on today, God. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We call you holy. We call you righteous. Lord, we come with we come with repentant hearts this morning asking forgiveness for those sins that we have done of omission and our sins of commission, those things that we knew that were wrong and those things that we didn't know that were wrong. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for the good days, the hard days, the times we had to cry, the days that we were buckled over laughing with joy. We thank you for it all. We thank you for it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory. We even thank you for sickness because you are the healer. My God, we thank you for lack because you are our great provider. Thank you, Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah and amen. God, I bless your name. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen, I love God. He is good to us. That has to be your declaration. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. That has to be what you just are going to say when you set your affections on that. That's just my decree. That's just my heart's posture. Whether I'm at a funeral, whether I'm at a grocery store, whether I'm at a wedding, God, I bless your name. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be be in my mouth. Whoo! Thank you, Lord. Listen, come on in the room. Let's talk this morning. There is a word from the Lord. Let's talk. Our subject this morning is how to be saved. That's our subject this morning, how to be saved. Hallelujah. Good morning to everybody that is tuning in. Feel free to let me know where you're tuning in from. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Lord. Let's stay focused this morning. Let's stay, um, let's allow the Lord to move and the Holy Ghost to move in this place, y'all. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over just a little bit of social media etiquette. All right. The, you're in the, wait a minute. Okay. You're in the sanctuary. All right. So the same as if you were in a sanctuary in a building and you came in being disruptive, you will be removed. You will be blocked or you will be, you will be muted is what you will be. You won't be able to keep commenting crazy things on the screen because we wouldn't let you yell out in our church. Okay. So I just want to go over that little bit of social media etiquette. All right. God is so good, y'all. Ooh, how to be saved. That is our conversation this morning. Let's start at John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life for God so loved. He loved the world so much. Many people think that God is mean and he's trying to hurt you and he don't want you to have no fun and he don't want you to be great. No, he wants you to be greater than you actually can think, ask, or imagine. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. 
Ooh, Jesus, that, that, that he wants you to be greater than you can think, ask, or imagine. We've settled for a counterfeit greatness. My God, people are saying, I'm living my best life, and you smoking, drinking, fornicating, lying, cheating, homosexual. Come on, all these things that are going on, that ain't even your best life. It's a mirage. It's a counterfeit. My God, it's a fake. It's not even your best life. A life in sin is not your best life. We got people out here hollering, I'm blessed, and they not even blessed by God. Listen, the, the devils took Jesus to a high mountain, and he said, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. My God, I'll give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. What was I? He was trying to give him what was already his. My God. And that's the same thing that it is today. And so it is the same way today. The enemy is offering you what he has already given you. What the Lord has already given you. Peace is already our portion. God, I bless your name. So we don't have to roll up peace or wind down with peace. Come on. We don't have to do that. Peace is already our portion. I believe that's in Mark. I want to say that's in Mark 4. I believe it's in Mark chapter 4. Just Google it. If you don't know a scripture, just look. you know a little bit of it, put it in Google. It'll tell you where the scripture will tell you the address of the scripture. So, um... The devil is always offering you. That's why he offers us lust instead of love. He offers you to lay up and shack up instead of being married. Okay. The devil always offers a counterfeit. He offers you, I want you to be my wife, Fee, but I ain't trying to change your last name for real. I'm not trying to change your last name for real. Come on. The devil always offers a counterfeit. I'm sorry, TikTok, that the broadcast is going in and out. I have no idea I'm connected to Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me double check, though. I don't know why it's doing that this morning. Yeah, I'm connected to Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm so sorry. All I can tell you is catch the full broadcast. I don't know why it's going to in and out. Um, catch the full broadcast on the YouTube channel after the live is over. My YouTube channel is called Makeover Ministry. All right, so let me let me stay focused. The devil is always offering us a counterfeit way of how to get things done. Manipulation. Come on. Uh um going about it another way, not allowing the Lord to do what it is that He already His perfect will. So you have the perfect will of God, and you have the what I've called permissible will. I mean, what I've heard called the permissible will of God. I call it the work together will of God. Okay. The perfect will of God is that that's how God wanted it to be, that He has an expected end for our lives. He has an expected end for our life. But then we have the work together will. All things work together. But just because it's working together does not mean that that was God's perfect will for your life. Okay? So we have to um, we have to be mindful and understand that. For God so loved the world that he gave the best thing he had. His only begotten son. The reason he gave his only begotten son is so that whoever believes in him, this is where we begin. You have to believe. You cannot be saved by what you will not believe in. Okay. You cannot be saved by what you will not believe in. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, and so we have to believe in the Lord. We have to accept him in our heart as our personal Lord and Savior. Okay, there's a difference between him being your Lord and him being your Savior. Let me let me cut my Wi-Fi off. Let's see if that helps. Oh, I don't know why that's on. Huh. I'm sorry, y'all. All right, let's see if that helps. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, hopefully that helps TikTok. I'm sorry. Um, so 
He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You have to believe in him. You will not be saved by what you don't believe in. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why you have to be mindful what you hear. You have to be mindful what you're listening to because your faith is being built by what you believe in, what you hear, what you take in, those seeds that are planted. That's why it is so important to get in your word. That's why it is so important to listen to music that is going to feed your spirit, not rob your spirit, because that's two different things. Um, you have to believe in it. Now, there's a difference between him being your Lord and him being your savior. If he is a lot of people, he's only your savior. He's only your savior. And what does that mean? That means that he is your rescue. You only call on the Lord when you're in a problem. You, you've you already gotten yourself in the mess and now you want him to come and get you out of the mess. He is your rescue. Okay. There's a difference between Lord and savior. When he is your Lord, he is your leader. When he is your Lord, he is your leader. You've allowed him to be your leader. So when he's your savior, you're allowing him to be behind you and pick you up out of the mess. When he's your Lord, you're allowing him to go before you and lead you. The word of God says the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Okay. So you first got to believe in him. That's the biggest part. That's the part right there. That you have to accept the gift. You have to accept the gift, the gift of eternal life, okay? You have to accept it in your heart, all right? Now, let's go to um, Romans. Let me give you a Bible. Because a lot of times we don't really know what we believe. And if you don't know what you believe, how are you going to stand on it? Romans 10 and 9. Okay, Romans 10 and 10 and 9 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. First, you have to be willing to believe. And when you believe and, and it's really in your heart, you really believe. Listen, now that's how you're made right with God. So many people are still stuck on the law part of it. We so part, we're so stuck on the law that we're missing the belief. You can read the word and you can follow the law, the Sabbath and wearing tassels and uh, all of these, all these laws, we can follow the law, but never believe in your heart. And that is a, uh, that is, a, that's a problem. That's a problem. It's a difference between believing in the law and having relationship with the Lord. Okay. All right. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Okay, so we have to believe um Jew, let me keep going. Jew and Gentile, Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay. So we have to understand, um, you got to believe in your heart. You got to confess with your mouth. It's just like marriage. Okay, it's just like marriage. You you go up and you say those vows, but do you really believe it in your heart? I can tell you I love you all day long. I can tell you I'm going to be faithful to you all day long, but is it really solidified in your heart? And when it's really solidified in your heart, it is shown in your actions. Okay, we're made right with God by believing, by believing, um, believing in his, in his son, by believing in his way, by believing you can only be saved by what you believe, okay? All right. Now, this is the part that's so interesting and I love. I love the word of God. It just blesses me every time. Verse 14 says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? 
Okay, you cannot, you will not be saved by what you won't believe in. Okay, and how can they believe in him if they never heard of him? Because first faith comes by hearing. Okay, and how can they hear about him unless someone tells them about him? Come on, and how can someone tell them about him without being sent? Ooh, that done blessed me so good. Come on, people have to hear the word of God. I don't just come here because I want to come here. I got other things that I'm doing. I'm being sent by the Lord. People have to hear the word of God. Even if you feel like they don't want to hear it, say it anyway. Okay? Even if... I am so sorry, TikTok. This is really cutting up this morning. I mean, literally. It has never been that bad. I'm sorry. We plead the blood over the airwaves this morning. Um, we have to be willing to say the gospel, even if you feel like people aren't listening, because you just never know who is listening. You just never know who is listening. Yes, you never know, even though you think you're not. And sometimes you're speaking to their spirit man and their flesh is fighting you. But say it anyway, because you're planting those seeds. The word of God says one plants and one waters, but it is God that gives the increase. And so many times we're fussing, we're frustrated, we're upset because we've said it over and over. You're just the planter. You're not the waterer. So after you plant the seed, you pray and say, God, send the waterer. And and a harvest is not grown in one day. Okay, you gotta let it let it happen. Let it happen. Your words and your works are not in vain. Blessings, buddy. Your works and your words are not in vain. How can they call on him unless they believe in him? But how can they believe in him if they've never heard of him? But how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how can anyone go and tell them without being without being sent? That's why the scripture said, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers of the good news. Okay, so you want a good pedicure? Share the good news because the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of those that share the good news. Good morning, everybody that is just now tuning in. All right, so we have to understand that it's more to being saved than just saying a prayer. Because if you only say a prayer, but you don't believe it in your heart, then at the very end of the day, you just said a pretty poem. You just said a pretty poem. You have to actually believe it in your heart. So that is why it is important for us to continue to share the gospel and not worry about if they receive it or not. You just speak the word. That's all God has called you to do. All right. Let's go to um Let's go to John. John 13. Let's go to John. All right. Let's go to John 13. We're going to start at verse 2. It was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas, son, son of Simon Iscariot, by, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. See, that is what you got to know. Your faith has to be solidified. I can't worry about who's coming up. People too busy worrying about their haters and worrying. Judas is a part of the cross, okay? You can't get, Judas helps you get to your next level. Stop getting frustrated about, you have to know, okay, either which way I come from God and I'm going back to God, whichever way this thing goes i can't get caught up in the middle of it it's a part of being saved judas is a part of being saved you're gonna have those you don't gotta get bent out of shape about it so he got up from the table took off his robe washed wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin then he began to wash the disciples feet drying them with the towel he had around him then Jesus came to Simon Peter and said, Lord, are you going? Then Jesus came to Simon Peter and Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing, but you will someday. No, Peter protested. You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you don't even belong to me. Ooh, 
baby, come on. You don't even belong to the Lord if he does not wash you. So we can say, I'm saying people will argue with y'all back, honey. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saying you don't know the relationship that I got with God. You don't know all these things. Cool. But unless he washes you, my God, he has to wash your feet because your feet represent everywhere you have been. Your feet represent the journey, the places that you have been. My God, come on. Your hands haven't touched everything, but your feet have touched Every place you have went. Come on. So he, he told him, he was like, if I don't wash you, you don't belong to me. It's not enough to just say out of your mouth, I love the Lord. He's good to me. I accept him in my heart. But you're never washed. He who is in Christ is a new creation. And old things are passed away. What is new about you? If you're truly saved then something is going to be new about you. Not just something. Everything is going to be new about you. Come on. He'll change your name. He'll change your dress code. He'll change your language. God, I bless your name. That's that washing process. The things you used to do, you don't do no more. The places you used to go, you don't go anymore. Come on. At the very end of the day, he who is in Christ, not on the outside of Christ. He who is in Christ is a new creation and old things are passed away. So we have to continue to allow him to wash us. And washing is not a one day thing. I'm not saying this all, you're going to get it all in one day. No, but what I am saying is that the Holy Spirit will begin to make those things uncomfortable to you. Come on. I've read back in the day, I've read my Bible. And still smoke weed. I used to go to, listen, me and my buddy, we used to go to church. Okay, Friday night service, leave the church and go to the bar, sit at the bar and have us some drinks. Come on and then get up and go to church on Sunday and have uh, whatever thing on, on Saturday, have choir rehearsal, dance practice, get up, go to church on Sunday. We used to do that because it was as I kept on though, come on, come on, as I kept on going, don't stop going to church. God, I bless your name. Don't stop reading your Bible. My God, come on. There have been times that I smoked weed and read my Bible. Am I telling you to do that? Absolutely not. But what I'm telling you is through that washing of that word, my God, he began washing me. Come on. He began washing me. There are some things in my testimony. I know the very day that I stopped doing that thing. I know the very day that the Lord was like, you know what? Today is the day that that will be no longer a part of your life. That giant you shall see no more, my God. But then there are other parts of my testimony like smoking and drinking. I don't remember. It's just one day I woke up and I didn't smoke weed no more. Come on. It was just one day I woke up and I, and I didn't desire to drink and I didn't drink anymore. Come on. See, there are parts of your testimony that you will remember the day. And there are some at Washington, it's just so clean. It's just so smooth. My God, it's just so smooth that one day you just won't do those things anymore. He is washing you of your taste buds, the places that you used to go. It begins to get uncomfortable. Keep eating that scroll. My God, the more you get in that word, the more you come on, the more you go to church, the more you praise, the more you worship. Every time you lift up your hands, God, I bless your name. You are in the surgery room in heaven. My God. And the Lord is beginning to wash your heart and wash your mind. My God, and bandage your wounds. God, I bless your name. Because the truth of the matter is that many demonic influences and demonic spirits, they come in through hurt, pain, letdown, and rejection, and weapons will continue to form as long as you live. God, I bless your name. So at the very end of the day, he has to, you have to stay in the healing room of heaven. My God. Healing is not one time. And deliverance is not one time. Come on. You first got to get saved. You first have to get surrendered. See, many of us, you might be saved, but you ain't surrendered. Meaning you may have said, okay, I want to accept the Lord. I want to accept him as, as, as my savior. I want to accept him as my rescue. But now I'm ready to accept him as my Lord. That is when you surrender. Okay. That is when you surrender because now you're asking him to leave. You're not asking him to clean up your messes. He God, I bless your name. When you only accept him as your savior, as your rescue, as your savior, my God, but you don't accept him as your leader. You're only saying, I only want you to clean up my messes. I only want you to clean up those things that are uncomfortable, that I don't like, that hurt me, but the things I still like. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving you that. Wait a minute. No, you're just, you're not, I don't need all of that from God. I just want you to take the cancer, not the cigarettes. Come on. Hey, glory. 
God, I bless your name. Come on. That's so good. That's so true. You have to be willing to allow him to wash you. That washing, that washing of the word. You got to stay in your word. You got to stay in your word. You got to stay in your word. One day I was on an airplane and I began to flip through my Bible. God, I bless your name. And I turned to John uh, 8, John 8. Um, and around verse 44, and the Bible says, you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. And I was like, what? And the Lord said, take that word evil out and put all that stuff you like to do. You like drinking. You like smoking. You like going to strip clubs. You like cussing. You like talking crazy to people. You like dressing inappropriate. You like wearing lingerie in public. Come on. You like persuading people to get off the path because you're dressed so inappropriate. They can't keep their mask state on Jesus. My God. You love doing all of these things. You are a child of the devil. God. right there on that airplane, baby. When I tell you, listen, getting saved is not a one-time thing. Come on in the room. That's why you got to stay in your word. God, I bless your name. Because the place that the Lord was sending me to, temptation was waiting on me. God, I bless your name. And the Lord wanted to remind me, though, that's what children of the devil do. You a child of the devil? Come on. Let's go to, um, I believe it is, let me see. Let me find it. I believe it's, yeah. Here we go. God is so faithful. First John. Let's go to 1 John. God, I bless your name. Chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. It, see, we got, we're not preaching this. I don't know what people's preaching. We got too many motivational messages. Come on. You're going to be done went to hell from a church that I only giving you motivational, motivational. Oh, yeah, you've got this. The Lord is kind. He is so kind that he will send you to hell because he has given you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to turn from your wicked ways. God, I bless your name. Bless you, woman of God. All right. 1 John chapter 3 and 7 says, Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, I don't care which way we trying to make this thing go. My mama always says you can't put icing on a pound cake because it don't go on there. Okay, but when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong. To the devil. Yee! I didn't say it. It's Bible. My God. When people keep on sinning, God, I bless your name. Hey, city on that day, city day, city on that day, city on that day, city. He glory. My God. Hey, God, I bless your name. When they keep on sinning, it shows that they belong. You're still in the hand of the devil. Many say I'm struggling. I'm trying to stop doing this thing that keeps calling my name, my God. But today I have made you aware that struggle, my God, this battle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against principality of evil and wickedness, my God, in high places. You're still belonging to the devil. You have to come out of agreement. Yee! Work out your own soul salvation. My God, you got to give the Lord access. And then come on, you have to not only give him access. My God, you have to, to follow his leading. My God, you have to turn from your wicked ways. My God, many people are saying it this way. Oh, well, if the Lord, if he, if he take it from me, I won't do it no more. No, you going to have to turn away from your wicked ways. He glory. You'd rather humble yourself. You don't want him to do it. My God. Come on. This, this is Bible. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But this is the blessing. But the son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Why? Because God's life is in them. Do you have the spirit of God? I didn't ask you, do you have the gift of tongues? I said, do you have the spirit of God? Because it breaks the power whom the son sets free. It's free indeed. See, sometimes your demon didn't come out. It came subject to the power of God. That's how do I know? Because when I'm in the presence of God, when I'm in the sanctuary, I'm not, I'm not overtaken by it. But when I get home, God, I bless your name. That thing is waiting right there at the door. It's like, okay, I'm going to let you have your Sunday service. I'm going to let you have your little, your little live. You're going to come on. Cause I know you'll be back. My God, you're still belonging to the devil. 
Many people, and I was raised like this. I was raised, you just give your life to Christ, you go to church. I didn't even know about deliverance. I didn't even know about the devil being cast out. That thing gets to come out. Yee, my God. Especially those things that have, that have made roots and made homes in you. God, I bless your name. Yes, deliverance is real and it ain't pretty. My God, that thing ain't going to let you go just because you said you don't want to do it no more. You got to want to be free. My God, you got to get to a place where you want to be free, where you realize your hand, your life is still in the hand of the devil. I still belong to the devil. I'm a child of the devil. My God, I keep on sinning. God, I bless your name. I don't have a desire to do what I used to do. God, I bless your name. Help us, Holy Ghost. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice, a practice, a practice. Okay, now listen. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. That not 77, 179, 7,007, not seven million. Come on, wait a minute. A righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up because you know why? Because on that eighth time, you're now, that's that new beginning. Okay, that's that new beginning. That's even why the Bible says when an evil spirit is cast out, see, the devil knows the laws. Of the Lord, the principles even better than the people of God. Listen, the Bible says when an evil spirit is cast out of a man, it goes out and find roaming dry places, finding none. It comes back to its home. That's why you had that craving again. That's why it's, it, that thing came back and you had that dream. That's why that old lover called again because it came back. Come on, finding the home. This is the part right here. Finding the home empty, garnished. My God. Swept clean, but you empty. God, I bless your name. Hey, shitty on that, that is, shitty, city on that, that is, city on that, that is, city on that, that is, city. You can't be empty because you carved out a space for that thing to live. My God. And so now it is no longer there. You got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to be filled with the word. My God, you got to be filled. Come on with the spirit of God. You cannot be empty. Come on. And if you pour out all day, if you live in this world, weapons form daily. God, I bless your name. You got to be willing to go back to the word and fill back up. Pray lest you enter into temptation. It's not my word. It's the Bible. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning. Oh, I'm trying to tell you the truth. If I ever have lived it, God, I bless your name. Come on, baby, because when I did make them times in those times that I did fall, God, I bless your name. I couldn't keep on sinning, my God, because it got uncomfortable to my spirit. It might have felt good to my flesh, my God, but my spirit man was tore up about it, my God. My spirit man was bothered by that thing, my God. My spirit Spirit man wouldn't let me get no rest. My God, my spirit man couldn't get comfortable. God, I bless your name. It might have felt good to the flesh, but I couldn't sleep good. Come on. Hey, God, I bless your name. You could have laid with that person, but then you was going to be at the clinic. My God, because God loves you so much. He ain't going to let you slide. You're going to get caught every time. God, I bless your name. Come on, I tell my son that all the time. Son, your name is Bishop. You go out there and get in them streets, you're going to get caught every time. And I'm my prayer, see a lot of people, they say, oh, just let the punishment be like God. No, don't let the punishment be like God. Let the punishment be heavy enough to draw him to his knees because many of us, when we keep on following it, we keep on doing things, we keep on, my God, we keep on doing it to the point where we think that it's just okay to do it and we don't learn from our mistakes and we we don't go back to God because we've got too many earthly rescues. You, my God, help us, Holy Ghost. They can't keep on sinning because God's life is in them and because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers and not belong to God because we got some that live righteously, but they don't love other believers. No way. It said believers. It said you do not love other believers. You don't even know how to speak to people. You can't be kind to people. Come on. You so worried about the law that you don't know how to love. And love is what this all is based upon. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. My God, your identity has to be changed. 
to be considered truly saved. Come on. Your identity has to be changed, has to be different. And you don't even got to tell nobody. They're going to see it. And it might be drastic. I went from a uh, beauty queen model, glitz and glam, glitz and glam kind of pageant look, Barbie doll. My God, I had to take it all off. When the Lord said, no, strip before me, that's too much. You done got so full of you that you done lost me. My God, hey, God, I bless your name. And so the Lord stripped me down of everything. You can, I'm, I'm confused when people feel like that all I had to do was say a little couple of words. Must Jesus Christ bear the cross alone and the rest of the world go free? No, you're going to go through things. You got to be washed. You got to be delivered. We all were born into sin, shaping in iniquity. So when churches are not allowing deliverance to go forth, they're not even offering deliverance, they're not even talking about deliverance, they're not casting the devil out. My God, they're not breaking curses. My God, none of that stuff is going on. What, what, what are we doing? We now, we now have just come into a place where it's just motivation. It's sugar-coated. How would you pray for someone who has a double life? I just have to ask the Lord, but ask the Lord to bring them to their knees because at the end of the day, the Bible says, work out your own soul salvation. So when I'm praying for somebody else, I always say, this is what I say. This is what I say. May the love of God chase you down. Yee, baby. Because that prayer right there, the love of God sent his son whoo, to die a bloody death. My God, hallelujah. On a rugged cross, God, I bless your name. Come on. At some point, you gotta be willing gotta be willing to accept the full gospel of Jesus Christ that means love that means transformation that means deliverance my God come on it's all the parts be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind my God be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pray for their mind. Let their mind be renewed. Because many people, we can go back to that. If your mind is not renewed, you can say the prayer. You can come to church. You can do all those things. But if your mind is not made new, my God, if your mind is not made new, God, I bless your name. Romans 12 and 12. If your mind is not made new, we don't even have action. You can go to church, but you're still, you're, because how do we know your mind is right made new? Because your mind produces your thoughts and your thoughts produce your actions and your actions produce your lifestyle. So if you're still doing all the same things, we know that your actions are still saying that your thoughts are still the same and your mind has not been made new. I know you go to church. I know you sing. Come on. You can even be used by God because the word of the Lord says gifts and callings are without repentance. You still going to be able to prophesy, sing, pray, preach, all of those things. But it's up to you if you're willing to turn from your wicked ways. My God. How can you pray for your spouse out on the streets? You you pray that their mind is renewed. You pray that their mind that they say yes to God. You pray that they that they that they submit their will to the Lord. My Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. You have to be willing to be washed. All right, let's go to Isaiah. Let, let, this might help you a little bit. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah uh, 27 and 7. Isaiah 27 and 7. Has the Lord struck Israel? Has the Lord struck Israel as he struck her enemies? He has punished her. As he punished them. Has he punished her as he has punished them? No, but he exiled Israel to call her to account. He, he put her out. Come on. The Lord said, I love you so much. I got to put you out. Come on, God. I bless your name. He exiled her to call her to account, to accountability. Now you can look at your life. Come on. Because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't appreciate what you had. My God, you didn't appreciate that I was here. So I got to allow you to feel your circumstances. God, I bless your name. The NIV translation says by war, by war, warfare, warfare and exile, 
you contended with her by the situations that we go through. God, I bless your name. You contended with her. God, I bless your name. Come on. Measure the, the ESV says measure by measure. You exile and contended with her. Come on. Those situations. Once you give your life to the Lord, it's a whole blessing. But now you got to be purified. God, I bless your name. Come on. Let, let's keep reading the word. She was exiled from her land as though blown away in the storm from the east. The Lord did this to purge Israel's wickedness. Because once you get saved, you still have to be purged. You have to be delivered. God, I bless your name. You have to learn. Now, when you have, well, how do I know if I'm delivered? How do I know? Because the Lord begins to deal with those idols in your heart. The Bible says, as a result, all, not some, all the pagan altars will be crushed to dust. No astral poles or pagan shrines will be left standing. Okay. So when you truly have submitted your life to Christ, he begins to cleanse you. He begins to wash you. He transforms your mind. Come on. Your actions begin to line up. The Lord begins to deal with you. You can hear from him clearly. He begins to lead you and guide you but now let's keep reading let's go to Matthew 24 Matthew 24 God I bless your name Matthew 24 and 13 but the ones who endure to the end will be saved so it's not enough to just start a relationship with Christ it's not enough to just get delivered my God let me go back to that scripture when an evil spirit is cast out of a man God I bless your name and it goes out into the de desert, roaming dry places, finding none, coming back, calling you as home. It brings seven more spirits, even worse. Now, wait a minute. It brings seven. It's one itself. So now we got eight. And the Bible says, and the state of the man is worse than in the beginning. So now there is a new beginning and you're going to be worse off. This is why it is very scary to get delivered and go back out there. Baby, when I tell you I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. Listen, no, that ain't on my testimony list because I already know what it took to get out. Being purged. Come on. Being purged from homosexuality. Then I had to be purged because that's mental illness. So then that began to bubble up. God, I bless your name. Because it's mental to be to want to be with someone who is the same as you. It's mental to go against who God created you to be. God, I bless your name. No condemnation. Understanding is here. Come on. It's, it's, it's a mental thing. There's an issue. There's been trauma that has happened to the brain. It is a trauma response. And some say they feel like they were born that way. Fine. We all got to be born again. So now we got that out of the way. All right. Let's move on to the next subject. But at the, at the very beginning and the end of it, those that endure to the end, you have to stay in the faith. Those that endure to the end shall be saved. God, I bless your name. Oh, my God. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, let's go to verse 18. Ooh, Jesus. God, I bless your name. You're good to us. Ezekiel 18, and let's go to verse 24. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful acts and act like other sinners, should they should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die in their sin. Okay? So it's, you know, it's not uh, whoever's preaching this once saved, always saved. It's a lie because the Bible just said right here. Come on, let's, let's get the word of God. Do let's, however, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course not. All their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die in their sins. Okay. So at the very end of the day, we got to endure. We got to be delivered. We got to be watched. We got to maintain our deliverance. We got to pray lest we enter into a temptation. We got to have our mind change, okay? We have to use new weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, all right? Ezekiel 18 and 24, Ezekiel 18 and 24. However, if righteous people turn from their righteous behavior and start doing sinful acts, start doing things, sinful things and act like other sinners, should they be allowed to live? No, of course. 
course not all their righteous acts will be forgotten and they will die in their sin. All right. So that is the word of the Lord. Today we talked about how to be saved. Let's just say you found yourself on the broadcast. Let's just say you found yourself on the broadcast today and you realize that something ain't quite right or you have never accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your personal Lord or maybe you've never accepted him as your savior or maybe you're in a backslidden state or maybe you need to surrender. I don't know what your situation is today, but I encourage you to say yes to God. I encourage you to say yes to God, no matter what situation you in, you don't, many people say, oh, I'm going to come to Christ when I get myself cleaned up. You get in dirty. Listen, I, Apostle Chad Collins of Miracle Life in Louisville, Kentucky, he blessed me when he said that. He said, you don't get in the shower clean, you get in dirty. God, I bless your name. You get in dirty. Say yes to God today. Yes to your will. Yes to your way, God. You say yes to everything else. My Lord, hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. If you, if it is it well with your soul? <clears throat> is it well with your soul? Life is not promised. One minute from that, from right now. Is it well with your soul? If it's not well with your soul, repeat this prayer with me out loud and in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. Fill me with your Holy Ghost because I can't do it by myself. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you're coming back just for me. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I'm submitted. I'm ready to be washed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. As an apostle of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you when you have problems, run to God, not from him. Run towards God. Don't just seek his face. I mean, don't just seek his hand. Seek his face. That's the difference. When he is only your savior, you only seek his hand. God, I bless you. You only want him to rescue. You only want him to give me, give me, give me. You think he's an ATM or a genie in a bottle. When you seek his face, you begin to get your assignment. Now you're speaking. Hands don't have hands don't have mouths. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. The word of the Lord says, those that have his spirit, they live righteously. They live righteously. It, it purges you. It prunes you. It, it tells you what to do. It leads you. It leads you into all truth. That's what the spirit of the Lord does. It leads you into all truth. Many people have taught that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, do we all speak in tongues? No. Do, do you want, do you desire the gift? You can definitely desire the gift and ask the Lord to give it to you. But your life is the proof. The Bible says, whom the son sets free is free indeed. You're different. Your desires are different. You forgive your enemies. You don't hold grudges. God, I bless your name. You pray for those that mistreat you. You see past their flaws and see their needs. You see that, yes, they're cussing you out. They're cheating on you. They're lying, they're lying to you. All these things. But clearly there's a deeper need. God, I bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Give us strength to endure. Guidance, lead us, guide us into all truth, oh God. Give us courage to continue to preach the gospel, cry loud and spare not. We thank you, Lord, for the purging, the pruning. For you are a good God, perfect in all of your ways. So after you're saved, after you're delivered, after you're purged, you're pruned, you're purified, God, I bless your name. After you've got all of those things, then you got to do the work. That's the next part of the assignment. You got to share the gospel so that someone can be saved, someone can be delivered. My God, you get to be the vessel. We all are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might not have a pulpit, but your pulpit might be right there at work in the drive-thru where you work at. 
God, I bless your name. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. My God. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Wow. All right, people of God, I love you all on today. I pray this message blessed you. I pray that it encouraged you. You are on TikTok and the signal has been crazy all morning. I'm sorry. You can catch the full broadcast on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Makeover Ministry. Hallelujah. See, the thing about it is you don't get to choose what you want. I didn't want this. But if I wasn't here, it wouldn't be blessing you right now. No one signs they self up. Be mindful. Just let God do what he's doing. Don't keep saying what you want to do, what you don't want to do, because it's pride to tell God what he want to do with you. Yee! Come on. It's like going to the store, buying all the ingredients, making your famous recipe, whatever your recipe is. We're going to talk about cake and pie. So let's just say you go, you buy all the ingredients to buy to make your famous pie. And when you take it out of the oven, you set it on the table and the pie tell you, I don't want to be no pie. I'm trying to be a cake. I'm not trying to do all of that. I don't feel like being eaten by these people. I'm not, I'm just trying to be a showroom pie. I don't want to be a one that's eaten by the people. Come on. So we got to be mindful. If you want to sow into the word today, my cash app is makeover, M-A-K-E-O-V-A, -E ministry, dollar sign, makeover ministry. Hallelujah. Quit telling God what you're going to do, what you ain't going to do. Come on. Because the, your blessing is on the other side of it. God, I bless your name. It's selfish. We don't tell our job what we ain't going to do. Your kingdom assignment will always be greater than your earthly assignment. And be mindful. Let me say this last thing as I wrap up because it's on my heart. Be mindful how you honor people and dishonor people. Oh, honey, who do they think they are? Who called them a prophet? Who called them a preacher? Who called them an apostle? Honey, just because you didn't see God ordain them. Yee, my Lord, don't mean that's not who they are. Be careful. Because David was ordained in his daddy's living room. Come on. It wasn't in a synagogue. My God, I don't think he got no plaque. I don't think he got no certificate. But the man of God was sent on assignment to pour oil on his head right there in his daddy's living room. God, I bless your name. Be careful. Be mindful. Be mindful. Just because you don't understand it. Yee, my God. Well, last week they was a preacher and this week they're an apostle. And the last week they was up. Don't worry because I work out your own soul salvation. Be careful. Be careful. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to understand the call on somebody else's life. Because at the at the end of the day, this is my thing. I don't got to stand for you. So you can say you are the whatever name you want to go by. Listen, bless God. Because each title comes with warfare. I don't know who signs they feel. I wouldn't, I would not have chose to be an apostle, baby. I'm trying to tell you. Ooh, glory. I wouldn't have called myself that. But he knew me before he formed me in my mother's womb. He knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. Be careful how you handle God's people. You just do your assignment. Make sure you are walking in what he's called you to walk in. Because what I've learned is that we can be so busy worrying about everybody else, you ain't doing your God assignment. All right. All right. All right, people of God, I also do life coaching. So if you life coach, some people call it life coaching. Some people call it counseling, whatever you call it. I do one on ones. So if you're interested and you would like to do some one on one sessions, um, feel free to inbox me on whatever platform that you are watching me on. Feel free to message me. Uh, do I got anything else today? It's Friday. Amen. Now, if you did not catch the announcement, let me go ahead and go over it right quick. If you did not catch the announcement, we are, uh, I'm moving the ministry. We are relocating. And so we will no longer have Friday night service and Sunday morning service because we are relocating the ministry. Okay. Um, so I want us to, so you, I won't be live unless the Lord put it on my heart. I won't be live Friday and Sundays. Um, so we are, we're relocating the ministry. I'm excited about what God is doing, but we will not be live Friday and we will not be live, but we will be live Monday through Friday, uh, 
Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. You can catch a morning makeover. Um, yes, that's so true. People can't put you in the pulpit if God doesn't assign you. Very true. Now, people can see the gift of God on your life, and that's a blessing. If the Lord allows them to see who he's called you to be, God bless. But even if they don't, don't you not be who God called you to be because people don't understand it or they don't accept it. They didn't accept Jesus, okay? A prophet is without honor in their own hometown. And so that's why the Lord will move you away because there's some, there's a whole group of people that are waiting on what it is that God is putting you. All right. All right, people of God, I love you. I'll be encouraged today. Have a great day on purpose. I'm Apostle Julie of the Makeover Ministry. Blessings and peace. I'll see you Monday at seven. Lord willing.